closet. Okay, we're now headed west. Actually, it's east. Okay, the general direction is west to Colorado. We got everything packed, and I left the door open all night, so he was actually able to move the truck to wash it, pull it back by the house, and then it wouldn't start. So it's already off to a good start because we had to jump the truck to get it going. So we're hoping it's just a low battery, not a bad battery. Yes, but we are on the road and I think we got 17 hours of this. Right, we're gonna break it up into two days. So eight, what, eight Stop hours? Stop somewhere in the middle of Kansas. Yep. Hopefully have about eight hours tomorrow, eight or nine. We're planning on sleeping in the back of the truck, probably in a cemetery or something like that, maybe. Yeah, those folks don't seem to mind. Yeah. So, but we'll probably see you tonight when we're getting ready for bed. just going to do a little bit of an update here on our first day of scouting for our 2024 Colorado elk hunt and uh, we finally made it up to our lookout point and we spent about the last two hours glassing and uh, wasn't quite the terrain we expected a little bit more intense a little bit more brushy and you can see that right in front of us uh, this valley out here does look pretty good but uh, the only thing we were able to glass up are a couple of cattle, actually about 20 or so of them. And if I zoom in, you might be able to see some of them right down there by the watering hole. Let's see if I can get Oop, there, just above that watering hole. There's a couple of black spots. And then there was quite the handful over there on that hillside well, that's a little bit of a disappointment to see all the cattle that are still in here uh, we thought they were supposed to be out by the time first rifle season came along but maybe we maybe some of the stragglers got lost but anyway beautiful scenery up here and like i said the terrain is a little bit more than we expected but we're still alive so we're going to give, see if we can, uh, right at noon here, see if we can get a bugle. If there are any bedded, bedded elk down there on those flats somewhere. So anyway, you're going to give it a try.
Wait for it. Wait for it. Nothing. We did manage to find uh, some elk droppings pretty fresh and quite a few tracks on this nasty old hillside that we came up and uh, also found one spot where an elk had just peed where he was standing so it couldn't have been more than uh, probably six hours old. So there are elk on this mountain and in this valley, just a matter of finding them. But being that it's just the first day, first morning of scouting, we're going to see if we can find some elk in a few other places before we uh, lock down on this one. So we are going to head back down the mountain, and it is one steep decline for the first way too far. Then it levels out, but hopefully the trail is better than what we experienced coming up. So... something glassing you can see some mule deer in the frame here on a little bare spot but not quite the quarry that we're looking for oh yeah they're definitely mule deer they're only about a mile away we think yeah but Yeah, not exactly what we wanted. Hey folks, it's uh, day... <laughs> Squirrely? Seriously? We... Squirrely's our GPS. Yeah. Anyway, uh, day two of our Colorado elk hunt, and actually this is day two of scouting. Tomorrow is when the season actually opens. And uh, we've had some challenges, run into some challenges finding elk. We found a few droppings and a little bit of fresh sign yesterday, but it was in an area that looked like it was going to get hit pretty hard by outfitters. But uh, what we're running into though, we, ch we changed locations from yesterday, and what we're running into today is a whole lot of the critters that make those things right there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Lots of cows. There. A whole lot of cows. Cows up high on the mountain. I mean, way up there. Cows down low, cows in the middle, there's cows everywhere. So that's been kind of disappointing. And then the other thing that we're running into, uh, we have extremely warm weather for this time of the year. Normally there's snow on the Grand Mesa by this point, and it's way too warm for that right now. So we're thinking the elk are at higher elevations. And the other thing we've run into is a lot of this really thick brush. I mean, we've run into a lot of oak brush and other types of brush that just make it a pain to navigate and uh, and to see anything that might be there. Uh, there's not really many open spots to even glass up some critters. So we're gonna head to higher elevation, hopefully find some cooler temperatures and some more open spaces to try to glass. Yep. Uh, there probably are a few elk here, but uh, I don't know that it's worth spending the time to try to find them here. So anyway, we're gonna head on out to higher elevation and we'll talk to you then. Yep. Okay, it's opening day, opening morning. It's 
almost 11 now. We went down. Well, we walked in about two and a half miles. Yeah. Most of it was uh, like ATV trail, but then we got off a little bit and set up for the morning and just didn't hear or see anything. I mean, it's almost 11 o'clock and we have yet to hear a gunshot. And uh, we walked a little bit through the meadows and we couldn't find just any uh, sign of elk whatsoever. We started to get pretty concerned. I mean, despite running into a fair number of elk hunters up here, you know, on the trails, um, there's just no elk sign. And we were starting to head up to a little bit higher altitude to a little lake up here and walking through this dark timber that you're, you can see that we're in. We finally, just a few minutes ago, found the first reasonable fresh poop. And now we have a pretty good rub that we found. Definitely a very early season rub. It's pretty dry now. But at least we're ru finally running into some elk sign. So hopefully uh, once we get up here a little bit higher, uh, we can find an elk. Hopefully. <laughs> so as beautiful as our little campsite is right here oh, there's um, we are going to leave this area behind because oh, the gator, the, the we rock. have run into some intel that says this area gets way over hunted during the archery season and we have seen so much recreational use and we have hiked about eight miles today and probably seen more bear poop than we have elk poop so we figure out it's about time to head to another spot so goodbye nifty little spot on the grand mesa we're going to try to find another one so now we are here um we're looking at location number what three in two days as far yeah. as the actual hunting days between hunting and scouting we're now looking at location number one two three four five the fifth, fifth location uh the fourth location this morning uh was a little bit more promising and that we found some fairly fresh elk scat but uh it seemed a little bit close to the roads and then this morning we actually heard a couple shots and we saw the best evidence yet for any elk uh, when we saw a dead one go past our campsite so in the back of a truck and those shots uh, came from this direction and we had already scouted this out as a potentially good spot so apparently there are elk over here and hopefully the shots that we heard didn't uh, get rid of all of them so uh, we're going to give this area a try this evening we got some clouds rolling in hopefully this overcast sky will uh, get them out moving a little bit sooner in the evening and uh, we'll give you an update once we get to our spot well here's the view from our second day afternoon setup we've got a saddle a couple saddles that they might be coming through um, might be bedded in some dark timber there off to this side here we have some north facing slopes that hopefully uh, hopefully they were in today so we're gonna just see what happens okay besides it looking really good through in this valley back at camp enjoying some uh, hot ham and egg and cheese sandwiches and a nice fire and making a plan for tomorrow kill an elk yeah after we find it we have to go to higher altitude we're thinking so we're gonna 
find a couple spots that are maybe about a thousand fifteen hundred feet higher if we can and that's what we're gonna try well it's the third morning of uh, Colorado elk hunt and we are running out of gas but we're gonna give it another couple mornings I am not running out of gas I am however <laughs> got a spot I don't know what about 10,000 feet this morning I think it's about 9,600. 9,600. We're about a thousand feet higher than yesterday, and uh, we found some timber cuts that we're going to try to head to. As we were heading up here, uh, we just saw very, very uh, little activity as far as people. Kind of makes us wonder if we're in the right place or not. But uh, we're going to give it a try. The habitat looks good, but we've thought that about the last five places we've been at. So we'll see what happens. We ran into this here at our camping spot. Apparently some family had made some pretty good memories camping with grandma in this area. So that was pretty neat, I thought. You know, seeing things like this are a good reminder about what these kind of trips are all about. You know, it kind of helps a person keep things in focus. Uh, you know, it's more about spending time with family just enjoying each other, <laughs> I think, <laughs> rather than uh, getting an elk or a deer or whatever a person's chasing after. You know, so just really enjoying the time with family, trying not to fall here on the rocks in the creek. But uh, anyway, definitely helps put things in perspective, that's for sure. Well, this morning when we were coming out of our hunting spot, uh, we ran into another hunter who has been hunting this area for a handful of years now and successfully. And we found out some good news and some bad news. Um, the good news that we found out is that he said we were actually in one of the better places in this area. Um, and which that, that kind of made us feel good because we were beginning to question our all of our abilities. <laughs> yeah being that we had seen so little elk sign or and seen no elk at all uh, but uh, he said that what there were four four that he had four hunting parties four groups or four pairs of people that went out from their hunting party and in the first two and a half days of season they had not seen a single elk either and he had also talked with an outfitter who was actually bringing people off the mountain because there were no elk here this year. And I think what he attributed it to and what we're kind of figuring out is the case is it's just way too warm. Uh, the elk have gone to really high places up in the mountains and they're staying in the dark timber. They're just not coming out while it's light at all. And they're staying well off the paths as well. So, um, and that's if they are even here um, and they they should be but you know you just don't know with elk because they they behave a little bit differently than a white tail or a mule deer so we're going to give it one last shot this evening we're going to go about as high as and far as we can physically go uh, and hopefully not run into some people who were able to take horses that high uh, but we're going to give it one last hurrah and see if we can't uh, stir up some elk and some dark timber this afternoon. You got any thoughts? Nope, besides the fact we're going to kill an elk this evening. I hope so. If it doesn't, if we don't kill an elk, we're gonna kill my hips. Because um, what we have about four miles in front of us, one way. Three and a half one way. So if we do get one, I don't know what we're gonna do. We'll figure that out when the time comes, but we're gonna head to hopefully where the elk are. Yep. Well, we are finally into some action. We think we were walking up the hill to our evening spot and we heard a bugle. And we've heard multiple bugles now. And based upon the movement of those bugles, we don't think it's another hunter. That would kind of ruin it if it is, but. Well, 
after two and a half days of hunting, we have finally found the elk. Right here is a fresh wallow with some pretty fresh looking tracks in there. Trees, well none right here, but quite a few trees coming up that little valley. We found a lot of rubs on, just a perfect north facing hillside for these things to hang out in the day when it's just too warm. So I think we found our spot for the next couple days until the end of season. And it uh, looks pretty promising, we're pretty excited. We, we did lose track of that one, it just bugled and I think it just pushed its cows farther and farther away and it shut up. So we're heading up the hill, maybe trying to circle on it, seeing what else we can find. Well, folks, that got real intense in a hurry. Uh, we were walking back, spotted a bull about, oh, at least a half mile across this valley. He was feeding up the hillside. We went across as fast as our Missouri lungs could take us. And uh, we got it, tried to get in position in this little patch of trees right behind us, yet right up there. We, he was going on the top side of it. Whenever we saw him, when we were coming across the the meadow here across this valley but then he decided to flip down to the lower side of it and he spooked whenever we were going around the top side and he stopped at about 300 but Wyatt was shaking too bad uh, from nervousness about the first elk and the the run over here to take an ethical shot so he held off and hopefully we can get out here in the morning and uh, make a move on this guy or find another one up here so anyway, this, this hunt's got a lot more exciting in a hurry. Can't wait to show you what goes on tomorrow. The other one's going up the hill right now. We haven't seen the second one. So we're hoping he is down. He's down. He, let's go say it again. He's down. He went about 80 yards. He went, he's up on the hill slope. Yep. We can see his antlers with the binoculars. Oh man, this is so exciting god bless this trip yes he did and he knew what we could handle too yes he knew that there was no way i was going to be able to pack out an elk the first couple days i had to get used to the altitude there is a big bull down and it's all downhill <sighs> thanks to god's place and time yes thank you lord all right hey go ahead tony get up there i want yeah. my hands on it <laughs> I don't care. Okay, we're gonna have to do this in three trips because this old man's gonna only handle about 25 pounds of meat at a time. At least he's closer to the truck this way. Said so at least he's closer to the truck this way. 
and he even ran closer to, to the truck. It's just that it's about two miles. Holy smokes. I can see his antlers now. Yes, it is. I don't know if it's a six, but it's a big one. Oh man, his antlers coming over the top. This is the hunt of a lifetime. Public land, bull elk, day four. Day six, when you consider the two days of scouting. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh my. No. That is not just a little elk. Oh my. Five by six. Six by six. Six by six. Look at those dark antlers. You double lunged him. Oh, oh, look at this. Oh, oh man. A six by six. I think I might be out $1,500. <laughs> look at this thing. Oh man. Oh, Oh my. <laughs> Oh, look at It might not be the absolute biggest in the world. It, but I'm that's not. a huge public land bowl. Yes, it is. Oh, my. Spin that head around. He stinks like a running bowl. Uh, and it's a good six by six. Yes, it is. That is sweet. Okay, I'm going to have to calm down. Look at the view from up here. Uh, the view. The we are up here. It would be any better if it was a, at the truck. Yeah. But then we wouldn't have the story. No. But we've got some dark timber right there to hang him in. He's going to be a three tripper. <laughs> I'll see how we can do it in two. Three. Oh, that's a recording. So we can just show everybody the slope that we're on. This beautiful sunrise in the Rocky Mountains. Unbelievable. But now we'll go back and take some pictures. The old uh, Howa. And what did, what did you use? A Nosler? 168 grain. Did the trick. It went about 80 yards. Yep. It was uh, high in the lungs, but below the spine, so not a bad shot. It was a 308, right? 308. Yep. Almost forgot to do the important part here. That would have been bad. Nothing like, which I don't know, I've never had the experience. Nothing like notching an elk tag. October. Oh, it's good. Definitely. I thought it was adhesive. It better be adhesive. I didn't bring any. It's not adhesive. Why did I think it was adhesive? I have nothing to attach it. I had a rubber, oh, the rubber bands are back at the string, paracord. I guess I'll cut a little section off. Yeah, we got tagged, we got our pictures, and now the fun begins. All right, see you back at the truck. <sighs> wait, 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 where are you going? I think he would agree that we had no idea how challenging it would be to butcher something that large in the dirt. A little bit different than a whitetail, isn't it? Slightly. But we've got all of it in game bags. A couple there, one hanging up there, and two around the corner that you can't see. So now we're probably looking at about three trips back, and it's about a 1.8 mile walk. Yep. Yeah, but fortunately, it's all downhill. 
Well, heading out with our first trip and we've got more weight than what we should be carrying. <laughs> oh. We better hurry out. Okay. We'll get back with you later. Right now we have about eight tenths of a mile left. It's a mile I lost. No, I just checked. Eight tenths. One log better than another. You just want to go get it over with just a little recap we are back up to pick up the meat the second trip hopefully we can get it all and now we have to pack up another 150 pounds of meat and take it way back there but we're going to take our time and hopefully get back nice and safe. So the day got even better. So in the excitement of running up to get the elk, I didn't buckle my uh, backpack and my protection fell out of it. And fortunately we had videoed, or I videoed walking up to it, Wyatt used that video to figure out which rocks I had walked past and found it. So. Um, I guess this is where I say I'm, I'm going to contribute the value of this gun towards this his manufacturer's um, retail. Manufacturer's suggested retail price. Yes. Uh, I was thinking Cabela's extra low Black Friday clearance special. Okay, manufacturer's suggested retail <laughs> price. <laughs> okay. All right, we're headed back. Look at that beautiful moonrise. Where's uh, the, moon? the moon? Can you see moon, it? The moon. It's up there somewhere, hiding behind the cloud. Maybe you just can't see it. Uh, it's up there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like right there. You can barely see it. So we're going to get our packs loaded and head back. There's a pretty sunset over there. But yeah. So we have made it back to the truck with our second load of meat. You can see why it's probably been carrying upwards of 80 or more pounds of meat. I've probably got about 60. There is the truck. She never looks so good. But just thankful that we made it back. We will be sleeping in in the morning. Oh man, what do you have to say, Wyatt? Let's say I could wait a few more years till I shoot another one. Yeah, uh, <laughs> heard that. <laughs> I think I'll stick to turkeys. I can throw them over my shoulder and carry them home. I'm looking forward to turkey hunting. I won't even realize it on my back when I'm packing out a big one. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a wrap for the evening. I think we'll see you in, in the morning. Here we've got our campground friend. Drop some. Well, was it still a hot potato? Uh, he likes it. He oh, look. What about me? Oh. What about me? Here you go. Oh, no. That oh, one did. He found it, didn't he? Yep. That's hilarious. That one there is getting jealous. Very jealous. Somebody's trying to get a snack. I think these guys qualify as a pest.
meat from our elk hunt. And to say the least, that animal was a lot bigger than what I expected that it was. Uh, we added all the weight of the game bags together and we ended up with 256 pounds of meat. So, been a little bit of a chore getting it all cleaned up, but we're going to finish it up here hopefully this afternoon and get the ground meat ground, get it all in the freezer and enjoy some nice elk steaks for supper.